Hello and welcome once again to this part 417 of the series of videos on Chain of Command. You will be glad to know that this is the last in the <laughs> this particular series. We will be running more once we release the rules in the summer of 2013. But this is an opportunity to see our game go right the way through to its ultimate conclusion so you can see exactly how it comes to an end. So sit tight and enjoy the show. So here we are with the first phase of turn three. The Germans activate the wounded NCO on the roll of three and he leads his squad back towards the farmyard. The other Gefreiter in the orchard takes his rifle team out of the orchard and into the road heading for the wheat field and that phase then ends. The British now use their one to fire the mortar, deploying smoke. On the four, the platoon sergeant has moved from the field round into the road. He puts the Bren team there on overwatch up the road and gets the rifle team moving left into the field. I can tell you now that the sergeant is going to string together some coherent fire and movement tactics to try to crack this German nut. But we move on and in the next phase the Germans respond with their Gefreiter by the orchard, putting his MG team on overwatch and moving the rifle team into the wheat field. In the farmyard the other Gefreiter is moving his squad into the farmhouse. The German player could deploy his third squad at this point but he's holding out, hoping that the British tank comes forward and he can ambush it with their Panzerfaust. Now the British platoon sergeant activates in the next phase on the four and runs the rifle team from the left hand section through the smoke. You'll recall that the Bren team were covering the wheat field but as soon as the rifle team hit the hedge he, is immediately, he immediately calls forward the Bren to join them. They now advance to do just that. What is key here is that this rush of an advance puts the British within four inches of the German jump off point in the wheat field and thereby neutralizing it. The Germans cannot use this point as they can clearly not get troops there quickly and more to the point safely. If they want to use it again they'll have to counter attack and push the British back. Okay. Now using the roll of one the two inch mortar drops HE rather speculatively onto the weak field and it is pretty ineffective. In fact it's totally ineffective. But using the three the Churchill moves forward. The British have another three that's a junior NCO but they pass on that rather unexplainedly to be honest it would have been an ideal situation to get the section in the central field following the tank forward but they don't want to do it so it doesn't happen. On to the German phase now. On the roll of one the Panzerschreck team deploys from the jump off point on the right to fire from behind the hedge. It's a key roll, it's one of those key moments in any games and of course a disastrous roll of one leaves them high and dry. So the German Gefreiter in the farmyard puts his two-man rifle team on overwatch ready with their single Panzerfaust and then using the other three the Germans in the wheat field hurl a couple of grenades but these fall short and have no effect. Not a great turn for the Germans all round but not a great phase at least. In fact it's potentially disastrous. Now with their phase the British gain two in their command dice uh, uh, chain of command dice total with a pair of fives. The sergeant gets the rifle team firing while the Bren team moves to their left to line the hedge of the wheat field. And that uses up the roll of the four. The British now combine the two and the one to make three and activate their tank. Unsurprisingly, firing both the hull and coaxial machine gun, it rather makes mincemeat of the Panzerschreck team, uh, thereby eliminating that threat. And now we move into the seventh, and as it turns out, the last phase in turn three. The three sixes rolled by the Germans means that the turn ends, but also that the next phase will be German. The Germans are suffering from command and control issues, as all of their squads have actually broken down into individual fire teams. They're all split up by more than four inches. None are close enough to be counted as a coherent section, so the two is, is useless and they need to be activated by their NCOs or on a roll of one as a fire team, weapons team. The roll of two would actually allow them to bring on their third and final squad, with the next phase being theirs, now would be a great time to deploy that squad to take on the Churchill with their single Panzerfaust. 
But the German player misses the opportunity, understandably somewhat in awe of the Churchill. So, we now head into turn four. The Germans have the first phase, as we know, and they move the half-track to support their infantry in the wheat field and withdraw their Panzerfaust team in the farmyard to lurk to the rear of the orchard. They could have chanced a shot, but they'd have needed a six to hit, and the risk was too great, and they certainly didn't intend to stand there and suffer the same fate as the Panzerschreck team. Now it's the British phase, and they get an interesting roll. The three fives boost their chain of command dice, but the brace of twos looks pretty uninspiring to begin with, but the British player combines them to make four and activates his platoon sergeant. Now, Using his three command points, he hurls two grenades, or gets his men to hurl two grenades, which kill a couple of Germans, and then follows up on that with an assault by the section that he is leading into the wheat field. The British lose one man, but the Germans in there are killed to a man. And the British now top that off by playing their chain of command dice to end the turn, thereby removing completely the German jump-off point in the weak field, which they'd now overrun. So the Germans have been completely denied that jump-off point for the rest of the game. Worse than that, the Germans have got to make three rolls on their false morale, one for the loss of the fire team, one for the NCO who was killed, and one for losing a jump-off point. They lose three morale points, and that's seen their morale drop to four. Now, this isn't good at all. Um, the Germans are looking decidedly shaky. Um, if their morale drops to three, all sorts of negative things start happening. So they are on the edge of being able to operate with their normal capability. But it's now their phase, and let's see what they can make of it. Okay, well, a pair of fours isn't much help, but one of the threes allows them to bring forward the half-track, and it fires with its cannon while the one activates the MG team in the orchard who open up. In the crossfire, three British are killed. Not nice, not good, but cometh the hour, cometh the man. In the wheat field, the British are looking decidedly overextended to get the Peart team forward to take more time than is available. But the sergeant is clearly having none of it. The Bren team fires at the half-track, and whilst it has no physical effect, it rolls well, and that rattles the crew. The driver starts reversing back, but the sergeant now runs forward, chucking two number 36 Mills bombs towards the open turret of the half-track. One grenade falls short, but the other explodes on the wire grill. None of the crew are killed, but under such a savage attack, the, the German crew abandon their vehicle and run for their lives. Now this is a major morale test and the German resolve crumples further. Reduced to just two, they've got to surrender one of their jump off points to the British. They hand over the one on the lane to the right of the farm as we look at it, leaving them just one jump off point in the orchard and one in the farmyard itself. But it's all too much. Uh, it's all too much for the Germans and their player calls it a day. Sergeant Stan Deasy is awarded the Military Medal for Bravery in the face of the enemy, and there could be few who would deny him the honour. His well-constructed display of fire and movement were the key to wrenching the wheat field of, from German control, and his heroism in taking on the single half-track uh, the, the half single-handedly really sealed off the victory. So, a great British victory. So there we have it, certainly an exciting conclusion to our game here today. Hopefully it's been an opportunity for you to gain an insight into exactly how the rules are going to play when they're released this summer. You'll be glad to know that's the final one in this immediate series, although we will certainly be providing more videos for you and hopefully building up a real library of films which will allow you to gain an appreciation and understanding of our games before you purchase and then once you have in order to help grasp the rules. So we'll be coming back very soon with some stuff for Ducks Britanniarum. So we hope to see you then. Cheers for now.